what's up you guys it's your girl kelly kills and it's through thick and thin the podcast i am feeling very limey very citrusy today it's the shirt it's giving me energy it's giving me this upbeat as a matter of fact, I'm feeling like an artist. Like, I know y'all, I'm a comedian, but I'm talking about like, I got a song in my spirit. It's kind of weird. I don't know why I feel like I can sing and rap today. <laughs> Probably because our guest that we have today, man, listen, when I talk about game changer, life altering human being, but more importantly, just somebody who decided to step out on faith and do it hard body from ex- producing, um, <sighs> entrepreneurship, directing, AP. I mean, anything you could think of in the music industry, this brother has touched and turned into gold. And he's our guest today. Listen, I can't go no other, no further without introducing the one and only N.F. Burke. Y'all make some noise for the extraordinary. Yes. When you came up with Thank the you. piece. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, I did. I feel like I'm running for office, you know what I'm saying? Brother, you are running for office. You are the office. I think <laughs> all right, all when right. people see you, they like, you got my vote. <laughs> and that's I'll exactly how you did that. Thank you for coming through today. Looking sure. very shiny, giving us Gangsta uh-huh. Gone Legit vibe. Gangsta Gone Legit. Yeah, this is uh, my man P's clothing line. I'm not a gangster, but I'm representing him today. This, this, is, his, this is his clothing line, his hats. He's got jackets, leather jackets. He's got the whole thing. He's got sweatsuits. Oh, it's he, the product placement yeah, for me. Yeah. Shout out to Gangsta Gone Legit. I'm not officially a real like gangster, right. but I know some gangsters. Exactly. So I, I would wear that represent for the gangster. My husband used to be a gangster. Okay, we'll and see. And then he got married, and now he just... No, he's not. No, he's yeah, he, he but legit. he's a gangster gone legit. He's so, a gangster gone legit. I'm getting that's that. That's right. That, that's why he should, you know what I'm saying? But listen, you know why you got that good energy and good vibe to just throw that on so effortlessly? And, and it's, it, as soon as you walked in the room, everybody was like, oh. it, was, it was one of them starstruck moments. Right. We saw, we was happy to see you. But we <laughs> what you wearing? What, what you, you got wearing, on? Though? Because you know what you do. Right. You take a product. Right. You're good at taking something right. and turning it to something different. I, I try. Is that what you do? Is, I, are I, we throwing I, that it out there? No, no, absolutely. I, that's what I do. I, I try to give it the the recognition it needs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then let the audience decide. You know what I'm saying? That's that's, that's all I'm on there. And it was proof when I walked in the room, y'all knew uh, y'all were expecting me, but y'all weren't expecting what I had on. Then that caught your attention. That just goes to show. It's like, you know, I still got it. You, know you still got I that still got it thing. It. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of that it thing, you you decided you knew you had that it thing uh, at 18? Oh, no, nah, you know what? It was, first of all, it was uh it was 19. I was 19 years old, but even then I hmm. Come on. Uh-uh. No, don't be it don't even give us I like that. I, I, no, I'm trying to be truthful. Trying yeah, to be truthful. Coming from a, a dad, a musician, right. a, a, a musically inclined family. I'm we probably being like facetious even saying 19. You probably knew it at a child like I was, uh, I, I, I knew that I was different. I knew when I was coming up in Mount Vernon, New York, when I was growing up, right? Money earning Mount Vernon. Money earning Mount, Mount Vernon, yep. When I was growing up, I would I would listen, when, when we play the music, I would look at the credits on the back of the album. We had albums back then, you know. A lot of, I say that, a lot of people going to be like, what? You had what? A- a- album. Uh, we had a, a, a wax disc yes. that we listened to music on. And it you was huge. And it, it was, was huge, so exactly. fun to take out the case. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and then sit down and read read the uh, read the credits. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and see who wrote the songs, who produced it, um, uh, the arrangements, what instruments were played on. I don't know what why that fascinated me. And I, I think a, a piece of that was because my father was a musician. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what did he do? He and played he... piano and guitar. Oh, keys. Yeah. And, and guitar. My dad played the bass, so I don't... Don't have any like music. I don't background. either, but, but you I'm know, so I, I try. Yeah, you you <laughs> do the, the air, air bass. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that all day, <laughs> you know. But I, that gene never caught. I did not have the patience yeah. to learn how to play music. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, it wasn't for you too because you had the you had the patience to look on the back of an album, right? And read how who arranged and, and, the music and, and learn the behind the scenes. I wanted to know what was behind all of that. The business, right? 
That's the business part. Um, I just want to throw this out here. This has nothing to do with anything, but I lived in Mount Vernon for like three years. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. 422 South 2nd Avenue. Yeah, like uh, right around the corner. We're so, like, oh, do you know, did, did you ever go to the ice cream factory? You ever hear the ice cream factory? Uh, no. I, that was right there on uh, Columbus Avenue and Sanford Boulevard. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Sanford Boulevard was just a, a vibe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, it, that I don't was, know if it probably still was there. Is, uh, it, is it's it still, still there, there, yes. All these are 40, 50 years. Probably. Used to be a Carvel. That was a long time ago. Then it became the ice cream factory. That's one of the first places I worked. It was owned by some Italians. I, I worked. Italian. I did work for the mob. Yeah, I did yeah. work for the mob. Gangsta go legit. Exactly. Gangsta exactly. Gold. Look, there we go. Come on, not the gangsta. They, they owned that whole uh they owned that old uh strip plaza right there. You know, I'm sure I have. You, you know had what? you had you had to at least driven by it through if you were there for three years. I was but there and you knew I and you know I was in my Vernon. It's only so big. Four square miles. You hear me? And yeah. I loved it, too. Um, And so I was excited when they told me, or when I read that you were from Mount Vernon, because at one point, I think that you have shifted this whole Mount Vernon was the new Motown from the music, the artists that, that was coming through that they were saying that, like, hey, these people are shifting things, too. Mm -hmm. You know, the heavy Ds. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. When, when we were coming up, they, they, they were they were making noise. Heavy D was doing it. But also my boy Eric McCain Eric was McCain. Part, yeah. part of the group In Touch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all we all graduated together. Me, Eric McCain. Um, What's my man's name? Uh, Beast Move. Really? We all graduated. We were all in class. The comedian Beast Move, he was just on the Chris Rock yeah. special. We all graduated yeah, together. Yeah, Jay Beast Move, yeah. So do you know Talent? Do I know talent? Um, it's just comedy talent. He from Mount Vernon. No, I didn't. Yo, listen, I would have had no idea. I barely knew JB Smooth in high school. We just graduated together. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but Eric, I did know. Eric and I were very close. Okay, perfect. Um, and and uh, I was close with the Myers family. Uh, Jerry, Heavy, Portia, Tony. Oh yeah. And Floyd. Okay. And um, you know, they all came out. But also for Mount Vernon was Al Brown. He was two years behind me. I'll be sure. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Jeff Red. Yeah. Uh, P. Roxy L. Smooth. You, you know, know DJ saying? Eddie F. Listen, they yeah. just keep on rolling. They just keep coming out. And not only that, that was the music aspect. You know, uh, Mount Vernon's known for Denzel Washington, uh, who uh, came out from from Mount Vernon. Who else? Dick Clark came from Mount Vernon. Who else? Art Carney came from Art Mount Vernon. Who else? We we're one of the only high schools to graduate two NBA two sets of brothers that went to the NBA: Gus and Ray Williams, wow. and Scooter and Rodney McRae. So the the history in Mount Vernon is when we say Mount Money Earning Mount Vernon, it's 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 real. It's real, absolutely. It's real. So you you were brave enough to leave, knowing that in New York. People, I mean, it's the concrete jungle right. where dreams are made of. Right. That has been and forever will be. But you seem fit like, hey, I understand that there's movement and motion going on in ATL. Well, no, no, no. no. Once again, let me keep it real. Keep it real because it's the thing. Give us the thing. My, my parents were retiring and moving to Florida. Okay. And for me... Florida was the home of the newlyweds or nearly dead. Okay, you know what? Okay. That is so I'm just funny. Saying, I'm just that saying. is hilarious. Hold on, I'm the newlywed. The newlywed or nearly dead. Where's the lie at? Okay. That's good. That's good. I'm keeping it. Write that down. Uh, <laughs> Write that down. So I was look, I was not neither one of those. I wasn't trying to go and, and the land they had just uh, Fort Myers was just becoming a, a little city. We were in a swamp that they were developing into homes. So I said, I'm not, I, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Uh, so I read about Atlanta, heard about Atlanta, uh, and decided, okay, well, I'll just go to school here in Atlanta. Okay. It was like a year after I graduated from high school in 84. And, um, you know, so I just said, okay, I'll pack my bags up, come here and go to school. I'll be close to you guys. I'll be right next door to you guys. I'll be right. I'm deaf. A jump, skip, J hop, skip, hop, and skip and jump. Hop, skip, and jump. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and yeah, that, that's what brought me here to the city. Yeah. I was studying computers, computer information systems. Excuse me? Uh, you uh, mean to tell me you didn't come here for music? I did not come here for music. Wow. <laughs> I came here to be closer to my parents and to learn about software, speaking computer of, software. Speaking of guys playing. Right? <laughs> speaking of guys playing. Yo, and so so what happened was I was... um. In my in my school, and there was a gentleman by the name of Arthur Brown. Okay. 
who was in my classes. We became fast friends, and he was a musician. He played the bass. What did he play? Played the bass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he was like, you know, one day he was like, listen, like, you know, come check us out, rehearse. We, we're going to need some help. We got this big gig. Yeah. Opening up for Hal Melvin and the Blue Notes. Ooh. At this club. Blue Notes. <laughs> yes. You know, this, the, this the late, this late, late 70s, early 80s. 80s, yes. Um, so they were doing that gig at this club called Mr. V's Figure Eight, which was, was a very popular club at that time. And, and we went in there and, um, you know, uh, I was moving equipment, just, just shifting stuff on stage, setting up microphone stands, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I just got caught up in the whole behind the scenes. And, and the one thing that happened that night, that particular night, was Sugar Ray Leonard was in the audience. Now, Sugar Ray is the Floyd Mayweather Jr. of oh, our time. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was that dynamic boxer that was kicking everybody's ass. But he's, he's, he's an icon in history. Right, exactly. We, we, like, we can't go without talking about Sugar Ray Leonard. He, he made the way for the Mayweather. Exactly. Yeah. He sure did. And then, uh, so he came by and shook my hand. I was like, oh, my God, this is what being behind the scenes is about count me in. So <laughs> that that from so that point that, on, that, that fire was lit up. That's right the fire was lit at that particular party. I was like, I've got to become more involved in this. I think I found my niche. So I dropped out of DeVry. Yes, come on, drop out. This. I dropped out. I love out. a good drop out story. Come on. Yes. I did. I did. I left the Bye, DeVry. <laughs> And um, I went to um, the Art Institute. Of course, they you had did. a commercial music program called Music Business Institute. So I, I okay. started studying there, and that's where I met a no another whole line of people, um, like uh, Kenneth Kidd, uh, who was in, who introduced me to Jermaine Dupri. Wow. Um, you know, uh, there was uh, I met Speech mm -hmm. from Arrested Development there. You know what I'm saying? And, his, and, you know, his partner headliner. Yeah. And, you know, so I was just meeting, you know, new people, you know, moving forward. Yeah. So one thing that I just want to just get Kim up. Burst. Let me see. I'm sorry. No, no worries. Kim Burst. I have to say Kim Burst. I met Kim Burst there. I say Kim Burst because that name may not sound familiar to you. Okay. But Kim Burst, um, you know, she was one of the first people that I brought on to my uh, road crew when I was working with different bands. She came along. She was also a musician, but she came and helped me move and set up equipment and everything. But now Kim Burst is this superstar creative director, worked with Destiny's Child. Wow. Went on to work with Solo Beyonce. Uh, went on to work with Sierra. Um, and she did the halftime show for Jennifer Lo for J Lo, Jennifer Lopez, yeah. Oh, wow. See, and, and I, I, that's crazy that you even piggyback off for her because I want to say it's when you just kind of like not shoot for the stars and, and overachieve you just say hey this is some baseline stuff I want to just get into and, and wholeheartedly trust the process with that mm -hmm. the doors are going to open up for you and then the elevation comes naturally well it's it's just like you said like like you started out like I just my whole thing was I just wanted to be a part of it. Right. It wasn't you know? no overthinking no. it. It wasn't, no. I'm going to do this. It was like, hey, how do I get in the door? Exactly. And once you let me in the door, you can't close the rest of those doors. Right. Because what's destiny is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you did. And, and you know, there was no one, because the, the real industry hadn't hit here yet. You know, we, we had pockets of, of time, like with Midnight Star and... Um, uh, been the, some of the, the the other old school bands that came out of here in the in the early '80s, and um, you know Jermaine Dupri dropped Silk Times Leather mm. in the mid '80s. Uh, so we we were having pockets of success, and then we had the popular um, what is it, the uh, Jack the Rapper convention, where all the music companies, all the urban music companies would come and all their artists would come and they would do performances. All the radio people would come to the Jack the Rapper okay. and they would look at the new talent that was going to be released and everything like that. And a lot of people came to that. A lot of people. From know, all around the world. From all around the world. You know what amazes me about you? I just want to throw this out here to my listeners. The names and the timing and the timestamps that you have on things. It's, it's so like refreshing to hear because it's just like taking me on this journey. And, right. And I can see it, but that lets you know that you enjoyed your journey. Oh, I did. I did. I most certainly did. Yeah. And you enjoyed your journey because 
man, you have had some phenomenal stories then. And I mean, you're still trailblazing. You went from, hey, I'm okay with just let me pack this stuff up. I'm going to get somebody else dope and bring Kim. Um, even though she has her gift, she's a musician. Right. I'm going to include her into this, what I got going on. And eventually we're going to be running the our own department. We're going to be, just, you know. We, <laughs> we're going to be running we, departments. We're going to be creating. We were like the Forrest Gumps. Like, we didn't know. Wow. Yeah. We, we honestly didn't know. Like, you know, in, in school, when I was going to the Art Institute, one of my teachers had me watch, had the class watch. The Idol Maker, which was a film made in the early 80s about a guy who, uh, based on a true story, okay. about a guy who discovered talent back in the 50s. Yeah. One of the things that he did was he would go to the magazine stands, he would thumb through the fan magazines of the time, mm -hmm. all of them had Elvis and the Beatles on the cover, and he would see what are the young kids reading about and what was missing, what what. You know, you know, you, you can only sell magazines with Elvis and the Beatles on the cover, but for so long, it's like, what's going to be the next? Yeah. And that's what his mindset was. So I, mm -hmm. I patterned my career after this character. I would go to the the Kroger's or the 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 CVS. I would pick up Word Up, Fan Beat. Yeah. You know, uh, Tiger Beat, Fresh. Yeah, Fresh. All of all of those are Word Up type of things. I thumb through them and see who was who was on the cover and who was on the inside and why were the kids buying these magazines. Um, and mind you, I was doing this in Mount Vernon too because I was a big Michael Jackson, the Jackson Five, and Prince fan. Okay. And they at the time they were on the covers now. Um, going into the 80s, it was mm -hmm. more about New Edition. Yeah. You know what Come I'm saying? On, new edition. It was all about New Edition. Who's you know what I'm saying? about to go back on tour right now. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I this is the legacy tour with Guy. With Guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this so is going to be great. They're going to create the heartbeat tour, the heartbreak tour all over again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it made you smile. Uh, yeah, gonna be, absolutely. That's gonna be a time. Shout out to my man, Marvelous, Ma Marvelous Marvin McIntyre. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I want tickets for the show, Marvin. Just letting you know. And I'm coming with Ian just so you know. <laughs> Two more for me, my husband. So there it is. There it is. Set us up. Set us up. So you're able to make these calls and these, and honestly, you're able to make any call in the industry, regardless of what you want to sit here and tell me. I know. No, for a no, fact. no. So let listen. Me say, no, 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 no. I, let me tell you. I that gotta I be know. truthful now. I gotta be truthful. It's not. It's really. It's not. It's you know. It's it's not it's not like that. I wish I could pick up the phone and say, "Yo, you know this is Ian Burke. You know you know what it is." Really, I shouldn't have to pick up the phone. Somebody should be calling me saying, "Ian, I'm doing this and that." Yeah. That doesn't happen. Mm. That doesn't happen, and that's 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 the point. I'm not blaming anybody. People are doing their own things. They got their own lives that they gotta live, and that's what got into me saying, okay, Ian, you're going to have to get up and do this stuff yourself. Let's go. If you're not going to do it, because nobody else is going to see fit to do it for you. They're not. They're you know not. what I'm saying? And so people I, soon to forget where they come from right? and, and the levels they had to go to. So we were talking earlier be, um, about gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. How is the industry gatekeeping oh, right that, now? That, that will, well, right now, it's, it's a, a whole lot easier now than it was back then. Okay. And, and what's the difference you can tell? Well, you know, we had to... It's, and it's good and bad. Okay. Like, you know, when I had talent, I had to take it to, to labels or or to people who are associated with labels in order to get the talent on. Yeah. We didn't have to have records, though. We didn't have to have likes. We didn't have to have followers. followers. Algorithm. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it was like, you're, either you're talented or you're not. Okay. You know, and talented, okay. came, talented wasn't just singing uh, and rapping talent was anything. If you could walk into a room and hold somebody's attention, that was a talent within itself. Damn, I'd have been known. I'd have yeah. been known. See, though. and and that's <laughs> you see what I'm saying. Yeah. As long as you could walk in and command that presence, be like, okay, yo, Kels is, is here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because now it's not enough to just be who is that? Because everybody is like, uh -oh. ding, 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 ding. no, not just that. It's like, oh, uh, uh, let me check, see how many followers you got. Yeah, and that's so unfortunate yeah. because. Regardless to how times have changed, far as social media, following does not equate to talent. No, it doesn't it? Doesn't dictate that at all. Not at all. It doesn't. And so someone can go viral on a TikTok song where they did probably what thirty seconds of a song, and then now you have labels or people giving them these deals, yeah. and they're going super platinum, 
viral two million dollar contracts and our kids are like thinking that this is the way it this goes. This is the way to go. Yeah. And, and it's not. And Nikki so- Nikki Minaj said it best. Nikki Minaj says it's, it's more of a popularity contest yeah. than talent. It's about it's about that. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So um it, it's shoot, it's I, I I'm not mad at the times that we're in now. Um, but I do miss the the times that we were in back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was the gatekeeping then, though? I mean, it was just the standard thing. Let, let's go ahead and, and get the, let's get this talent out there. I was fortunate enough because, you know, I was finding real talent. Like, okay. when I put together TLC. Huh? Okay, Pebbles. so I didn't want to, I, I, I was going to go there. I was just waiting on you. I'm talking about TLC, Escape, Chris Cross. Right, I mean, right. you got so many, so many like the groups, the groups and experiences. Right. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I okay. Stand out. No, no, you know, out. I, no, and it's all good. I stand out and you're here. Okay, <laughs> big deal. <Go> ahead. <laughs> no, you know, like you putting together. If, if I go back to my story about going through fan magazines and, and New Edition being on the cover, BBD Bell Biv DeVoe was one of my favorite groups back then. It was like, yo, they were doing something amazing with music. Yeah. And I was like, yo, it'd be great if a female group did this. And I thought at the time that they were trying to do the same thing with their background dancers because they had female background dancers. I was like, yo, let me try to do this myself. And, you know, I had this young lady named Crystal Jones that I was already working with. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, a gentleman by the name of Rico Wade, who was one third of the... Uh, Platinum Plus production crew organized noise. Okay. He introduced me to uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez and Tian T. Boz Watkins, and I was able to put the three of them together and create a group called Second Nature. That's what I call them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And where did that name come from? Because you know what, I I, I was having a conversation with them mm-hmm. about rehearsal, and I was telling them. Y'all are going to do this until it becomes second nature okay, to you. Okay, I get it. I get it. And like then I was heart. like, second nature. And Lisa, who was my creative genius, she came up with the logo for second nature, gave me the logo for it. It was like fabulous. And um, that's what they were known as. That's what they were known as. Now, Pebbles came. The group caught their attention, mm-hmm. caught her attention. Uh, the concept caught her attention as well. And uh, wanted to meet with them and, you know, Long story short, she bought the concept out for me. She bought the uh, she bought them out of their contract, and she took them to the face. Okay. Now, and, and see, this is the thing: like my contacts and connections at that particular time was very limited. Yeah, I couldn't walk. I didn't know L.A. Reid at the time. Okay, um, I couldn't walk into any place and just be like, "Hey, I, this is what I do." I couldn't do it because I was here. One of the things that I tell everybody coming up because I like doing these type of things, these podcasts, Thank or you. talking educationally. I didn't have any mentors. I had to learn on my own, step by step, and I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But from there, the, the, my mistakes were life lessons. I had to get myself off, up, dust myself off, and just keep on moving. So now when you see young artists or young um, A&R, do you try to, if you see something in them, do you try to mentor them? Is that something that you kind of like are, is, are big on now because you didn't have that? Or do you wait for those people to come to you? No, I mean, you know, if I see somebody with potential, Mm-hmm. I invite them to come along. So a that. lot of these people, though, are so set in their ways. These young folks, they just feel like, yo, I have all the answers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I understand you know a lot more about this technological era than I do. That's for certain. Yeah. But there's some old school ways that I could teach you that could give you an edge, an advantage over just watching numbers and algorithms. So you know what I'm saying? that I, as an entertainer, obviously... Uh, you know, I'm a comedian, an actress, a host. Um, it was a hard transition. Mm-hmm. And Through Thick and Thin kind of was born from that. When we thought about Through the Thick and Thin of transitioning from stage to the internet. Right. Um, I did find it hard because I had older uh, comedian mentors who were like, hey, no, just stick with the comedy because the internet is going to crumble one day. So I, and not, and I love that I do the internet. I mm-hmm. love being viral on the internet. But I also know that by having those mentors that that told me to make sure I'm solid in knowing the, the fundamentals of right, the, right. what comedy really, where this internet stuff came from, I'm able, if the internet ever shut down, 
And people are going to live comedy, baby. We right back. I'm, I'm, a, I'm and, back. And, and you're, back you're, up right to, you're ready to go. <laughs> and that's the thing. They feel like that it'll never end. But I'm just like, guys, y'all better pay attention. Where's my space? Huh? What? Who? What? What's my space? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my producers say that all the time. Yeah, just one day you wake up and that thing is suddenly it's, it's, gone. It's, it's gone now. All the people who had, oh, I have a million pets followers on MySpace. What does that mean for you right now? <laughs> Zero. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, I think that both worlds can live together uh, and and actually work for each other. Like, if you're only thinking one way, though, I think you're limiting yourself. Like, I had to learn the benefits of social media. I'm not one to, to you know, I do it now because I have things that I'm promoting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't like having to, oh, let me post up this picture and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll get a few likes. Sometimes I'll get a, a lot of likes. Sometimes, you know, people will look at my stuff and, and be like, wow, this is great. And sometimes people just pass my stuff on too. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, okay, well, that's just part of it. But you know, I like I, I come down on certain folks that that want to be in the business. Like, there's no way that a man my age, and I'm 57, going to be 58 this year, okay. should have ten thousand behind behind. <laughs> <laughs> See, I need to cut the beard off. This has got to come. No, off. no, actually, that's the new thing. I just want to cut it out. Then keep it's the, the beard. beard. It's the meekly gray. You gotta keep it. <laughs> Oh, um, you know, uh, what was I saying? So uh, I, I, I shouldn't have, you know, I've you got almost been... 11,000 followers on there, you know, because I try my best to keep people's attention, mm -hmm. you know, through my content. And with that, I, I uh, do my best to promote the people who I'm working with or the, the brands I'm working with, the, the names that I'm working with uh, through my social media. Well, let's be very clear. I'm almost 110% that the Ian Burke today um, if he would have had the technology or the Enberg then, if he would have had the technology today, mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind that there would have be some solid, 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 way more solid <laughs> things that's going on because the, the, the game is changing. And unfortunately, some of the music that is being put out and things like that, I know it's hard for you to kind of take oh, that. It's very, it's, oh, I know it's, it's hard for you to take it in. Absolutely, it's hard. But <laughs> That is another thing that that help that social media helps. I'll tell you another story. You you said it like I got tons of stories. Yes, I'm I'm good. I'm so glad. I, I was representing this this young artist named Shang, and um she was signed to an independent label. Um, a producer friend of mine, Kate Class, uh, I did a record on her. Um, and she was like, hey, you know what? I, I, I know a rapper. I, I'm familiar with a rapper. She didn't know him, but she's like, yeah, I think so-and-so would be great on this record. And they played me the stuff. Now, you know, once again, I'm an older person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I was just like, you know, this is, this is crap. <laughs> so this real? ain't it. This ain't it. You know, but I was my thing was is that I'm not in tune to what the kids are listening to now. Mm -hmm. So what I what I have to do is go back. I went to his Instagram, mm -hmm. and I saw number one who was co-signing him. So who was he was in pictures with? Who was co-signing him? Then I watched a clip of him performing at some sort of white campus, and everybody knew the lyrics of his record. There we go. Come on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just like, okay, well this this isn't meant for me, but this will certainly help her. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying, and and her and her quest, yeah. And um, it 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 turns out that that person was about to be on the freshman class on wow. at, on the cover of the freshman class for Double XL that hadn't come out yet. Mm. So he came, but w the producer happened to go by one of our lovely club establishments, <laughs> yeah. one of our gentlemen clubs, yeah, and ran into the 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 person, and and they were like, yo. Uh, he told him that that we were interested in having him come and be on the record. Yeah, and um, we got him. For, I'm not going to name what what we got him for, but we got him for an astronomically super price. Yeah, yeah. Thank God before the cover. Before came the out. cover, yeah, because <laughs> yesterday's price is not today's, not today's prices. Price, that's the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? But um, that let's just say that 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 was a lesson learned. Yeah, that was a lesson learned, and uh, you know, the, this is now he's one of the top rappers in the game today. So how long did it take you to get to that point? Because I'm sure as you have been developing artists and things like that, you usually tend to walk into a room or hear something You're like that could be it. But have you ever had to see an artist that you kind of passed on or you didn't see that thing in them and then eventually they took, they kind of like 
It had a rise oh. to the top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You got any of those yeah. stories? Let me you? see. Let me see. I don't know what what story. Ah, that a very easy. Very easy. It was somebody that I was working with. Uh, I can tell you Bobby Valentino, Bobby V. Slow down. Exactly. Oh. Now, I signed Bobby when he was part of Mr. I signed him to Electra Records. Okay. We had the song Blackberry Molasses. Yep. Um, Which I listened to because I was, like, filling this whole interview out. Well, there <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. You did yeah. your homework. I'll be ready for my homework. Okay, go ahead. Um, and, and in my opinion, and, and, and Bobby knows this, I didn't feel like Bobby was the best singer. He was a great singer, but I didn't feel he was the best singer in the group. I actually felt that someone else was a better singer, and I I thought that that person would go on to have better success as a solo artist. But what I didn't count on was the fact that Bobby was very tenacious and and very driven. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's where I slept. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he was. This is what he wanted to do. He made it his mission yeah. to be successful. Yeah. And and you know I, I I didn't see it at the time. Next thing I know, he's getting gold albums and seeing him on, you know, features and stuff like that. It's like wow. And I, all I can say is, you know what, Dad, you proved me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you. We're still very cool to this day. Yeah. Um, um, you know, but that is one artist that I definitely and somebody that I had in my hands that I definitely slept on. You know, from leaving Mount Vernon to now, do you have a different way that you view talent or the way you even approach certain projects that you will work on or people that you work on? Because I, because we live in the era where numbers, um, and all those things, numbers, algorithm, followers. All those, all those things matter. Those matter before anybody even give you a dollar. They don't even care if you're talented. If you can put those asses in seats, you know, did that change the way that you view talent? Or are you still sticking by the, if you, you know, you're normal? No, I, I, I still stick to to my normal routine. It's like, and you that's know, what? And what is that? When you that that's when somebody can come in and just thoroughly impress me. Like I have a young lady named Olivia Blue, who's just an, a, an incredible single songwriter. She's working on her confidence and performing live in front of people. Shout out to Olivia Blue. But she is amazing songwriter, singer. She's just, and she's young. She's been that way since she was like in her teens. Mm -hmm. And, um, she doesn't have a whole lot of followers and stuff like that, but she's working on her social media and people are starting to take note because every time, I, uh, you know, she goes out and does something, her fan base, you know, uh, uh, grows, but it's, it's another opportunity. I'm just looking for opportunities now, aside from doing stuff on the internet where I could place her to help blow her up. So I, I did this TV show with my brother and a partner of mine, Dion Kubas, called The Aquatics. Okay. You know, so... Tell me about it. Um, it's about... It's a scripted story about uh, young teens learning ocean conservation. Okay. All right? Uh -huh. So they're, they're learning how to scuba dive the whole nine. Yeah. And it's, a, it's, you know, sort of based on some factual things because my brother, who is a former Navy salvage diver... Wow. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Uh, you know, th this was his mission to teach wayward children how to uh, scuba dive and then teach them coral restoration and ocean conservation. Okay. So he wanted to turn it into uh, some sort of story. And so he came to his brother who was into entertainment. And I, I, I helped craft it. Yeah, exactly. Smart Myself guy. and and a group of of individuals uh, got together. We crafted, you know, a couple of different versions of the story. We shot it. And um, in the latest episodes that, that we shot, um, I included Olivia Blue as a performer Perfect. on the series. Perfect. You understand Perfect. what I'm saying? Perfect. So, Definitely. You, and giving her that appearance, it's like, okay, now, you know, when the series gets picked up, you know, they will definitely see you. People Who is that? You. Right. Who is that girl? Exactly. So you have that opportunity to do that now. So- this podcast is one of those things that I really have to sit back and ask myself. When I think of artists and I think of um, entertainers or entrepreneurs or executives and what we do, it hasn't always been this. Mm -hmm. What has been your most struggling task, like as you were going along mm -hmm. this? Because what we say in a 30 year journey, but oh, I guess it is 30 because 84, I, I was born. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> okay. Okay. Because you left in '84, so we had a 30 
28 years. Right? Yeah. Be, yeah. And, and I, no, I mean, it's, I, it's, I, a thir- it's, it's, it's going to be 39 coming yeah, this October. Yeah, and I, and I say that with so much respect and honor and, and like, dude, that is, that's so notable and... <sighs> <laughs> people can't do stuff for 38 days. Uh, it takes 21 days to change a habit, and you can't get people to change a habit. Right. So for you to be in this, it hasn't always been highs. What has been some of those lows when you was like, you know what? This is it. Oh, there's a lot of those. Give me one that you oh, like. You goodness. wouldn't even believe this. You wouldn't believe this shit, Kelly. Oh, wow. I, I want to, you wouldn't believe this shit, dig. Kelly. I got to dig because, you know, I try to, it, like it's one of those things where, you know, I, listen, I got fired from every job I had in the industry. <laughs> I love it. My my first real job. Left school and got fired because you exactly, rebel. You know, rebel. I felt like I, I hit a glass ceiling. I I was my first job was running uh the hip hop department over Ichiban Records. Okay. Uh, one of my first artists that I worked with while I was at Ichiban and I helped break was MC Breed. Ain't no future in your fronting. Ain't no future in your fronting. Right, exactly. From Flint, Michigan. Was this on? Come on, yeah, man. that that was that was one of my first, and I worked there for about a year. Okay, and before the owners like, look, man, you know we love you, but you know you're not the same as when you first came up in here. Gotta let you go. When I went to work for, um, what the, what the what the hell does that mean? Well, you know the the drive, and when when you start, you know coming in late yeah, and the drive is <laughs> the, the same. <laughs> You, got you know, this artist, you're not, you're not doing, you, artist, yeah, exactly. Right you know, you, you know, your swagger is just messing <laughs> stuff up for you. You talk know to what us, I'm saying? Talk to us. No, that's what it is. Know. It's happening to this day, okay? And you know, so when you get that, you're like, oh my god, what am I gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh wow. You know, a couple of times I had to go out there and get regular jobs, like at FedEx, and oh, you know, get up early wow. in the morning, move boxes and stuff like that. <laughs> And and it it was torture. And I, well, I got hired by uh, Sylvia Roan and Merlin Bob over at Electra Records. Yeah. And I was t- sat down again after two years. I sat down and said, look, your entrepreneurial spirit is a little bit too much for what we're trying to do here. It's like, you know, you, you've got things that you want to do. So, yeah, we're going to have to let you go. And you go and do one. <laughs> go do one. No, em. wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. What is it? And I'm like, there's like, oh damn, I'm right back at this. So I've been, you know, in spots where it's like, okay, is it me? You know, what do I need to do? Like, what's going on? Um, you know, but the, it, it's always been growth for me. Absolutely, it's been growth. It's, it's been a, a subject. It's been a thing to help me grow. Let me put it that way. And um, you know, e- even as recent, I, I've worked with uh, Icon Studios now. Let's go, Icon. So one of the somebody said when you when you over there, Icon just know it's some money. Right, right. It's a whole lot of money in this month. That's all right. Shout out to Icon Studio. Right, yeah, y'all I'll, got the one and only Ian Burke. Y'all already they knew what they were doing. Well, 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 well. Whoa. I left there too at the end of the last year. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I love that too. I, you know what? I was there for 13 years. It's the longest industry job that I've had managing the studio. Good job for you. 13 years off and on at Icon Studios. Okay. You know, I'm still very close to the owner, Tasha Stafford, okay. and, you know, her husband, Stone Stafford. And, um, but, I I felt like I was stagnated there. Absolutely. You know, I, I you know, and then I was, I was get, once again, just getting lazy. And not, you know, putting forth my first, my best effort. So I put myself in a position where now I went over and and started working over with Patchwork. Patchwork designed a program where I could come in and consult their clients about the industry, and the, whether it's film, music, uh, publishing, uh, production, whatever. Go ahead and go ahead and give it. Run it down. What Artist you say? Yeah, all that. All, all, that. all that. And, and that. we're not gonna play it like it's lightly. I think that is God just really could no certain thing could keep you like contained, right? So, and sometimes you have probably had to just like pipe down. So God, like, okay, let me show you again that I'm still a God that's in control. Right. Because here you are working on new projects. Like, what's your new project you got going on? Because it's so much stuff you got. Well, I, listen. I just got word on Saturday that um, my TV show or our TV show, uh, The Aquatics, that has not been picked up yet, was selected for a film festival in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida, the Sunscreen Film Festival. Not only was it selected for the festival, 
it's nominated for the best new TV series. You know what I'm saying? You award. Up, exactly. And, and I'm just like, wow. And there's nothing, let me tell you, there's nothing like looking over an agenda or a schedule of films, independent films, and seeing your work, you know, listed as one of the, the films being screened at 8.15 on a Saturday night, uh, April, what is it, April 29th, I think. Wow. It's, 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 a, it's, it's an feeling. amazing feeling. And I'm also working on a docuseries as well uh, about my life in the music business uh in the early years yeah you know perfect. and basically just telling my story because you know i was fortunate enough to be around in, in different camps over at lafay's over at social deaf over at organized noise production over at rowdy um i was fortunate enough to be in these different cliques and see different things happen so is this gonna be a tell-all is it gonna be like juicy are we gonna hear some stories like oh shit or we're gonna be like, oh, like, like what was the, what's well, the? Maybe a little bit of both. Because I want to not... get the. We don't want no dirt. Like I don't like right, messy, right, but right, I like right. to hear like the tea. I don't want it messy, but right. give me some. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you're gonna get some tea, but I, I'm yeah. not gonna be. It's not gonna be a messy drama. Yeah, so no, it's we don't no part, messy. Nah, four part docu series. Wow. You know, and I'm gonna, once again, I'm, I, I have to be truthful about the whole situation. Yeah. And you know, I I feel people need to know my truth yeah. about it. And um, that's what I want to do. I think that even you speaking your truth, a lot of people will be able to develop more because even listening to you, even from the beginning part of this interview, when you told me just the the commitment of a turning, as simply as turning over an album and reading who was a part of it, those are the small things that people are not doing. And that's the business side. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us get caught up in wanting the fame and don't want to have to go ahead and put in that work. So. Your work is going to speak for itself. Of course, you have a four-part docu-series. Right. Of course, you're here to tell the story, and no one has to give you a story for you. And over this 39 years span, <laughs> yeah, let's be very clear. Oh. Over this 38, 39 year, 39 year span, you've changed people's lives, even when people were just, because I don't want all my followers to know that you, you were the person that people literally, and still to this day, would have been at Lenox Mall because that's where you found Criss Cross, right? Well, no, and, no. no oh, see, the mall, okay, no. The mall, they wouldn't follow you in the mall. What? No, oh, right no. Let, let's get that cleared up now. I did not discover Criss Cross. You didn't find them in the mall? No, Jermaine Dupree found them in the mall. Oh, okay. I was affiliated with Jermaine Dupree. Okay, And so I, I, I helped him... I thought, with, was, I thought you was getting a slice of pizza. Oh, no, no, no. Jermaine was out there shopping, spending some of his Silk Town leather money. Yeah. You know, and he found these uh, he found these young men in the mall. And um, he, he, I, it, what, it, what he did was it was a favor for a favor. Um, I, want, I needed music for my group Second Nature. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, if you, he saw the package that I did. Mm -hmm for second nature and he's like if you can help me put something together like that for my boys yeah i'll do the music well one hand washes the other and that that's the the basis of jermaine dupree's and my relationship i love it you know what i'm to saying this day? to this day perfect to this day like i i i'll, I'll get a lot of people oh i'll quick to say well you know why aren't you working with jermaine why you know this that and the third it's like y'all don't understand what jermaine it does for me like every chance he gets he stands on a pedestal and when he talks about the history of the Atlanta music scene, he always brings my name up, always, without fault. And I thank him for that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I thank him for that. Now he went on the Soul Train Awards and without me, without talking to me or nothing, like he just said in his opening speech, he was getting ready to honor uh, TLC, or not TLC, uh, Escape. And he said, a friend of mine named Ian Burke. Now, he didn't have to say that. He didn't. He could have just said, a friend of mine brought a group over or, you know, somebody introduced me. He purposely said, a friend of mine named Ian Burke brought these girls to me. You know why? Because there's a young Ian Burke who is not necessarily reading the back of a cover album, but he's watching. He's watching. He's, he's paying watching, attention. And he's paying attention. He's going to Google that name and he's going to find you because that's the world we live in and that's what you deserve. And that's the reason why you've worked so hard because our work is just always being full circle. We reap what we sow. Right. And when you, when you sow into fertile ground, 
you can't wait but to get a, an amazing harvest. And, and that's exactly what you're doing now, and, right? And that's what that's what's being done. And Jermaine Dupree is helping me do that. I love it. I love it. So groups, and I know I just this this honestly, I want to say this. It is been it's amazing, like interviewing you. It's easy, breezy. I feel like I can put a girl group together. I'm feeling, I'm feeling very inspired. You're I don't inspired know why. Right now. No, I don't good. know why I want to drop some bars. Um, but the group thing right now in the industry, there's not a lot of groups. Groups are no, not no, the, no. Groups oh, are you're not right. the thing right you're now. Right. And what is that? What happened? Where was the shift? Because everybody like, well, well, I don't want the group money. I, I want to be do my own thing, and and you know make all the money and and people are losing out on the fact that that's what's needed right now. I mean I remember um the uh I mean obviously the Migos was the last group that was like a big rap group. But I can't think of any African American groups that have been like charting for us. Uh well the City Girls made a little noise. Oh the City Girls they are a group. But see the see, oh, oh girl was JT was in jail so long. Right. <laughs> JT, the girl was had like, to... "That's all I forgot." It was the... yeah, right, so JT right. out, yeah. But it's not common. It's right. not common. I guess you don't want to split that money. No, nope, and... you don't. Nobody wants to split that money. But you know they, what? What folks don't understand is that somebody's waiting for that next dynamic group to come, and you don't have to stay. You know, no group, you know, stays. There's always somebody in the group that breaks off that uses a group as a launching pad. There's nothing wrong with There's that. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce did it. Um, Diana Ross did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, Lionel Richie did it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So there's the Michael Jackson and the the list goes on and on. Like Janet. You know, well, Janet wasn't in the group, but she's always been solo. Oh, I, thought she was <laughs> I thought she was just a Jackson. She wasn't a Jackson. Okay, but we love Janet. Okay. We love she Janet. She broke up from the family. <laughs> And I listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some stuff out there. You gotta catch it. Yeah, I got I got you. You gotta pick up what I'm putting down. <laughs> if you can put a group together, would it be a male group or a female group? Either or. Either or. Either or. I love the the dynamics because I two of my uh, more successful projects, of course, were female groups. Okay. That was TLC and Escape. Ah, I love them. You know them what both. I'm saying? So, um, I love the dynamic of 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 female group. You know, and I love. You know, anytime I would get a female group, I would make them sing male songs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And 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 do that because, in, in my opinion, you know, Escape back in the day was out singing a lot of male groups at the time. Like mm -hmm. they could really throw down, and all I had to do was say sing, and they would get right into it, completely uh, a cappella. You know, with uh, flawless harmonies, they they would just kill it. They would yeah. just kill it. And uh, so there's something about the female dynamic that I love. But boy, if I could put together another male group, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd take the best of boys to men and mix it with NSYNC and then cram it all together. And, 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 and then have, that's a, a slam dunk. A slam dunk. Oh, that is amazing. So listen, I I can't help you <laughs> um, with that. But if you ever want to tap into the industry of, uh, well, you already in film, if you ever need an amazing actress, a comedian, a host, whatever, I'm your girl. Um, I sound really, really good in the showers. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I sing. And so I bet you your husband appreciates that. <gasps> Baby, what? hit that note for me. Hit that note for me in the shower. <laughs> Depends on if it's a night nice shower or morning. <laughs> the point I'm making is I am inspired. I am inspired for your your energy. I'm inspired for just how humble it is to even be around you. Because even somebody with your resume could be a little bit more like, uh, but with the energy that you bring into this room and even though wait, people speak your name and praises, I am extremely proud that I was able to interview you. I need the people to know all my followers because Listen, they're going to follow you. They're going to flood you. They're going to go crazy. Okay. Because that's what we do. Okay? Okay. I have to check them real quick. Yo, that's what we do. Uh, you need to let them know your social media. Right. Let them know what you got coming up. How can we support? And, yeah, what, what what's up? What's what's the new thing? Well, you know, I, I tell everybody, my my uh, Instagram tag is Ian F. Burke. I-A-N-F-B-U-R-K-E. And I also offered it. There's a link in my bio. If you click on it, you could get a free 15 minute consultation call with me. I'm about to click that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to click, click it. it. I got to click the link. Well, I'm you already... got you got all the knowledge. I you got, got all this. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, you got like $500. I may have to click the link just to call that. Hey, yeah. Just to, hey, give me a little bit more. Give me, give a, me a little, little bit, bit more. more. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling the best today. Please motivate <laughs> So, yeah, I, I do that for for the people I do. You know, I give them free 15 Amazing. minutes and you can have a conversation with me and, and talk about, you know, what you got going on. And if you want to go further, you know, I, I do I do all of my consultations out of Patchwork Studios. Okay. And uh, folks can call up to the studio and schedule an hour with me. Yeah. You know, now there is a fee. It's not for free. It's not for free. It's a fee. It's a little, it's a fee, but it's an investment. It's an investment. It's not a fee, it's an investment. Absolutely. If we change the wording, it, 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 it'll hit different. Uh, you're right. A yeah, fee absolutely. sounds like, I don't want to pay that fee. But to invest in yourself? I agree. I'm changing. I'm making it official right now. There's an investment that yes. needs to be made in yourself. Come on, somebody. And once you make that investment, we can sit down and have this conversation. I will I will give you all of me the as 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 much as I can give and you know help you along your way. Yeah, I love it.